Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Last week I was asked to build a 3DS Max slash V-Ray workstation for a good friend of mine. We chose parts that were, let's call them, bang for buck Threadripper parts, and chose a motherboard that had all of the features that were needed that was actually the cheapest TR4 board that we, we could find. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. We're gonna unbox and take a closer look at Asus's EATX Threadripper X399 motherboard, the ROG Strix X399E Gaming. It is motherboard Monday after all. So yeah, let's, let's check out a motherboard. This one's gonna be a little bit different to the usual Motherboard Mondays videos because I'm actually gonna install the CPU, the M.2, and the RAM in this video. So if you've never seen a TR4 chip socketed before, you might wanna stick around. All right, enough talky, more half buildy. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Motherboard Mondays. If you don't know what Motherboard Mondays is, it's the series that I do on a Monday that is about motherboards. And this motherboard is the ROG Strix X399 eGaming from our friends at ASUS. And it is a Threadripper based motherboard. And before we look at the motherboard, let's get it out of here so we can look at everything else that you get with the motherboard <laughs> good joke now this is a front panel block let's call it that and basically what you do is you connect all of your front panel connectors into this block and you plug it into the motherboard and you don't have to worry about plugging it in the right way next up is this ancient technology the digital versatile disc which contains all of the drivers and all of the things you need to get the board running but let's be honest who even has a dvd drive anymore am i right <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad joke. Uh, righto, now this is a uh, M.2 standoff and screw to screw the M.2 into you. Yeah, uh, bad joke again. <laughs> now here is the manual that basically tells you how to live your life as it always should and would. And for some reason I decided it was a good reason to point here. Not that it actually means anything and yet yeah, it has pages. Next up is uh, some more M.2 screws and standoffs so you can screw the motherboard to you or I don't know what I'm trying to say here but yeah you guys get it. Woo! Do it again. Woo! Alright now this is a 20% discount coupon code card thing from cable mod which is very very nice with the code on the other side which I almost showed you guys oops a daisy now here are some zip ties in case you wanted to JDM your motherboard to your case if you don't know what that means google it I'm actually joking that's not what they're for they're for cables um, here is some ROG eye hole stickers I actually is it an eye it is right it's it's an eye and an eyebrow let me know in the comments what is next? Ew, okay. Oh, here. Ha, this is a good one. ROG cable labels. So you can label your cables. <laughs> yeah, good one. Uh, <laughs> next up is this motherboard layout in case you couldn't use your eyes to look at the motherboard to see what everything was. I don't know. <laughs> now this is a thing that basically tells your mum, hey mum, I'm 12 years old, go away, I'm playing games on my Threadripper system. Now you hang this on your door to tell your mother to either bring you a milkshake or to not bring you a milkshake. <laughs> All right, there's a lot to unbox here. Let's get into the next section. Now, this is an antenna for your wireless AC that is built into the board, which actually is a nice feature. Next up is this ancient piece of technology that is now obsolete. Uh, it's a high bandwidth <laughs> SLI bridge. Let's be honest, guys. NV Link, it's here to stay. Go away, SLI bridge. Well, next up is the, what is this? Oh, this is the thing that allows you to plug your M.2 in to stand upright on your motherboard. I would never use that personally. Uh, this is a RGB cable that, it, I think it's an extension cable for your RGB connections. I don't know, we'll figure it out later. And this is the IO shield. Now, ASUS always has really nice IO shields and this board is no exception to that rule because this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. All right. Okay, two thirds of the way there. All right, let's get into it. You get uh, four SATA cables for your hard drives, which is very handy because this is kind of like more of a workstation board. I don't know why they have gaming. This is a temperature probe, so you can probe the temperature. Uh, you can find the optimal place to put that. 
yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, and this is very cool, this adapts your RGB header on your motherboard into Corsair's system. So if you have like a Corsair Commander or whatnot, you can control it through whatever software it's called. What's it called again? You guys know, AuraSync. I'm just kidding, come on. All right, let's get this board out and take a little bit of a closer look at what you get for your molar. Right, so you can see six SATA 3.0 ports for your SATA hard drives, which is pretty standard. You've got some U.2 ports. Now, I don't know if that's ever gonna catch on, but it's basically M.2, but not. <laughs> USB 3.0 header, you've got a USB 3.1 type C header, which is very nice, a PWM fan header. Now this is the upright M.2 that I was talking about. You also have your 24 pin power connector for plugging your motherboard into power. You've got your AIO and your CPU fan header here. You've got a four pin CPU power connector as well as an eight pin CPU power connector and an RGB header. Right. Now this is the front panel audio connector. You've got a diagnostic screen that basically tells you if you've broken anything. Now I think this one is either a power or a reset switch. I think it's a power switch, I can't remember. I filmed this a little while ago. An addressable RGB header for your addressable RGB. Also an analog RGB header. Two PWM fan connectors. Uh, I can't remember what that was, but it does something. There is two USB 2.0 headers for all of your internal USB things. A USB 3.0 header in case you wanted to use that. There's, there's a couple of them. Some more PWM fan connectors, temperature probe connectors, and your front panel connector where you use that little front panel block thing to plug in with ease. Quite nice. Alrighty, let's get this guy off you. <laughs> that sounded so wrong. <laughs> let's get this shield off because uh, we want to see what's underneath. And yeah, you guys know what's underneath already. It's um, it's that. It's an M.2 slot. Right, let's actually take it off. Look how cinematic that is. Yeah. Alright, yeah. So it's a standard full length M.2 slot. It's a little bit higher than a normal one. And yeah, it's full length as you can see by my fingers showing you that it's full length. So what we're gonna do is actually put in this M.2. Now this is a 512 gig A data M.2. This is their new one. It's very, very fast and very, very good and I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, let's uh, speed it up and do some more time lapsey things. Right, what are we doing here? Right, we're taking a look at the RAM slots because it is Threadripper, it is quad channel and we have eight. DDR4 RAM slots, standard TR4 socket with a bit of plastic on it to protect it, and the regular CPU cooling mounting options, which is great. But yeah, let's socket this TR4, slide it in, push it down, clip it down, and then use that torque wrench, which is uh, a bit crazy because you have to tighten it down quite a lot. And yeah, let's get the RAM in, slot it in, baby. Oh yeah, clip it, clip it. All right, don't, don't mess this up, mate. No one noticed what you did in the last video. <laughs> all right, so you've got your BIOS flashback button. You've got your AC for wireless. You've got all of the USB ports you could possibly ever imagine. Gigabit Ethernet with some more USB ports, more USB ports. Hey, what's that? A USB-C port and more USB? <laughs> You're damn right. And some audio with the optical audio as well, which is great because it's a professional level board. As far as Threadripper boards go, this is on the cheaper end of the Threadripper motherboard scale, if there was such a scale. And by that, I mean it costs around 300 US dollar reduce. It sounds like a lot, well, that's because it is a lot, 
but for Threadripper, it's definitely at the lower end. And not lower end, like for features and performance though, just for the price. It's actually a really capable board. There is a link to this guy in the description if you wanna pick one up. Yeah, anytime you use one of those links, you know what happens, it helps the channel out, it gives us money, then we can do more things for the channel. I mean, it sounds really selfish, but it's really not. Come on guys, just use those links if you're gonna buy stuff. <laughs> if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. Tell us exactly what you hated about it because I love reading those comments. Once again, thanks so much for watching. I'm Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. There's also an aeroplane going over, which is also a really good sign that we are flying on over our first birthday. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, that was really lame. But we celebrated Gear Seekers' first birthday slash and of birthday or anniversary yesterday. So yeah, happy first birthday, me. <laughs> hey. And Claire. But mainly me, because no one cares about Claire. Hey. <laughs>